it's all the right-handed people that are. Everywhere. Yeah, they're the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Living in a right-handed world. So, you know, let's, we can change the paradigm here. We can change the way we're thinking about it. Let's not think about it as abnormal, associated with any particular disease. It's just throughout history and today, it's just the way that some of us are. So I, how does that lead us to, um, I, I guess, a, a psychiatric dose, uh, a, a diagnosis? Um, I, I was um, brought up in um, a, a Scottish, Irish, Catholic, Marxist family. Um, and in the Celtic culture, that's quite normal. Uh, I belong to a Celtic culture, I'm part of the Celtic nations. And um, so, so we tend to be quite extreme in some ways, you know, both in our religious beliefs, our political beliefs, it tends to be all those kind of things get mixed up. Um, and like most Catholic boys, I, I, I went through a phase of uh, wanting to be a Catholic priest. Um, and that, that started for me just around the age of 10. And around the age of 10 and a half, my mum, <coughs> And myself and my parish priest went to see our bishop. And it was decided when I was 12, I would leave home, uh, go to a boarding school, a Catholic boarding school, that was attached to a seminary college. And when I finished my secondary education, I would go straight to seminary, uh, train for the priesthood. So my life was pretty much mapped out from a very young age. And, um, I was quite comfortable with that because it was me that led that process. You know, nobody ever suggested to me to become a priest. It was something that I, I wanted. <coughs> and we had a parish priest that was a lovely man and he was great. And he, he became ill and we, we lost him and we got a new priest. And our new priest uh, was much younger, uh, but he was a paedophile, which um, was the start of my journey to madness. Um, he sexually abused me and uh, a number of others. And I guess in that abuse, I, I lost um, a number of things. I lost my childhood. I, I lost my innocence because I was an adult and um, I knew things you weren't meant to know and a, a whole host of things that just took away that innocence. I, and part of losing your innocence was losing your relationship with your parents because uh, it's your parents, in a sense, that keep you in that innocent state for a really um, long period of time. And the other thing I lost, of course, was my faith, and that, that just went. Um, uh, and I kept myself going through playing um, rugby. Uh, I always see rugby as, um, uh, I, I guess it's sort of like American football without the padding. Uh, we don't wear any of the protective stuff. Um, at all, we just get in there and try to kill each other. It's much easier. Um, and I, I was very good at that game, um, mainly because when I played, I put the face of the Catholic priest on the opposite number that I played up, I was paired up against. And I used to spend the whole game trying to crunch them. Uh, and in a sense, and Paul and I have been discussing this recently, but rugby became my first form of self-harm because I didn't, I, I didn't only go out to hurt, I went out to get hurt. So for me, the pain was a bonus. It wasn't something I tried to avoid, which in a funny sort of way made me a good player because I wasn't scared to get in there. And so I would get into places where people wouldn't want to go and just uh, go in and um, do what we call rock the ball out. And, uh, so I got a reputation of being a good player, but quite a nasty and vicious player. Um, uh, and that kept me going, and um, I, I started playing adult um, rugby when I was 15 and a half. Um, you meant to be 16, but I was a bit rough for school rugby, so they put me in with the adults. Uh, and I loved that. I loved playing rugby with adults. Um, because you were treated differently. Uh, I, was with, I was with a group of men, really, and after the game on Saturday, we'd go to the pub as you do, and they would sit me in a corner and give me a, what we call a shandy, which is a, a little bit of beer with a lot of lemonade. <coughs> you know, and, um, so you could taste the beer, but you, you weren't really drinking beer, you were drinking lemonade. Um, 
Uh, and uh, it was one evening when I was in that pub, um, this woman walked in and um, I fell in love. Um, uh, you call it love at first sight, don't you? Yes. Yeah, who's done that? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Ultimate psychotic experience. You know, we just do crazy things when we fall in love like that. It just ooh, takes over our life and we just uh, get in there. And um, this, this woman was called Annabelle. She was nine years older than me and she was an artist. Bit of a hippie, really. And uh, um, I was a bit of a straight face. I, I just played rugby and did beer. Um, and uh, I went over and started talking to her. And uh, I asked her if she'd like to go dancing after the pub. And, uh, you know, I was totally astonished when she said yes. I mean, that was, uh, you know, I just blew me. And uh, we became lovers, uh, really, first. Um, and Annabelle taught me a number of things. The first thing she taught me was the difference between abuse and non-abuse. You see, abuse is always about power. Non-abuse is about love. And she taught me what love was in a very real way. Something that I'm sorry to say I forgot for many years later on in my life. Uh, and that's probably drove me more into madness than anything else. Uh, and she taught me what love was, she, she taught me to appreciate the art, she taught me to appreciate more things in life than just that. And she taught, uh, she was a sculptress, but she taught life drawing. Um, I didn't know what life drawing was, you know, um, but being a man, when she told me that, I just couldn't say I didn't know what she was talking about, so I said, that sounds great. You know, and um, left it at that, you know. And then um, she, uh, one day, uh, her model couldn't make it, and she, she got me, and uh, we were living together, and said, can you come down to the art college tonight and model in this life drawing class? And I still didn't know what life drawing was, so I went to this life drawing class, uh, you know, expect to stand there like this or something, and uh, she put me in a small room, just off the classroom said you can change in there and there was nothing to change into which was a bit of a shock and I guess that's when I discovered life drawing um, and so I did that and I had to do it for six weeks because that's that was the, the course length and, and it was okay and that's kind of fun we had um, and I still played rugby but I didn't use the face of the priest anymore I just enjoyed the game it was wonderful I had a great time and, and we had a friend um, particular guy um, who was a real pain in the butt because um, he kept on trying to get us to go to these meetings with him on a Saturday night or a Sunday um, and he was a born again Christian you know and uh, he, he would try to get us to go to these meetings and we were going no 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 far too busy you know and eventually we came up with this strategy that uh, if we went once he would leave us alone so we went, and of course Annabelle and I became born again Christians, um, which was a bit um, of a shock, mainly for me, um, but I think also for her. So we separated and split that night, and we got together again six weeks later on our wedding day, um, and um, we were ready to live our lives together. Um, and I continued to play rugby. And, uh, Annabelle and I only had a year and a half together. Annabelle died. Um, uh, she, she got complications in, uh, during a, a part of her life. And uh, she basically, we had to turn off this uh, ventilator thing and we, we let her go. And um, I was still a teenager when I buried my wife. And so I couldn't handle that. So. And I got really angry with God and told him he didn't exist, so I gave up God again for the second time in my life. Um, and I went on a, a journey then uh, into the British Army first, uh, did a degree in business administration and accounts while I was in, uh, came out of the army because I got bought out by a company, um, went to work in the city of London, and I became a child of Thatcher, big time. I went way, way out from my socialist uh, roots and family roots um, into Thatcherism, and there was a reason for it. 
Thatcherism didn't believe in society or community. She believed in the cult of the individual. And that worked for me at that time because I didn't want relationships. I didn't want people. Because people either abused you or they died on you. So I had no interest in going in that direction. And so Thatcherism came at a time for me that was uh, really quite a... Really, it was quite a shock anyway, but um, I got out of that. Uh, I didn't get out of Thatcherism. I got out of it in a very strange way. I, I was playing, still playing rugby, although I brought the priest back because that's the only way I could face going on the field. Um, and one game I broke my hip and pelvis. Uh, there was a smash up and I was on the wrong end of it. Um, and I was told I couldn't play again, so my, my rugby career was essentially over. And rugby was my coping strategy, and I lost my coping strategy. And when you lose your coping strategy, you know, there's a big void, someone has to fill it. And six weeks later, I found out what filled my coping strategy. And that was the first time I heard a voice. I was sitting in my office, I was waiting for... Uh, the computer to do an analysis and it was in those days when computers were tapes and I was waiting for that analysis and a voice behind me said you've done it wrong and that was me I, I just what's going on here there's nobody there I, I just couldn't hack it so I went immediately to the pub as you do and I got smashed and I got smashed out of my head uh, because I just couldn't bear this thing um, and I thought I was stressed and I'd be okay the next day. And uh, the next day never came for many years, I'm afraid. Uh, one voice led to two voices, three voices, four voices. And, and very quickly, I was hearing voices all the time. And I couldn't do my job, I wasn't looking after myself. I, I, I'd started self harming in sort of funny ways. And I, I, I just couldn't handle anything and I got that call that you get in the office from my boss uh, who said you've got two weeks Ron sort yourself out or you're gone two weeks later I was gone that, that was going to happen and with that I lost my house uh, got a bed set I never lost that sold it but I got a bed set um, in London we don't call them bed sets we call them studio flats which is posh for bed set uh, it was a bed sit. And uh, I went to uh, stay there, and for three months I was okay. Well, I wasn't, but I was. I, I spent three months taking every drug I could get my hands on, any, al any copious amounts of alcohol. I just wanted to be out of it. I was looking for oblivion, and I knew I was looking for oblivion, because every time I was compass meant as these voices would be screaming at me. And I just wanted away from them. I woke up one day and I, I dragged myself to my own doctor, our general practitioner, and I told him what was going on. And he said to me, you need to see a specialist. So I saw my specialist the same day. I've never seen a specialist so quick in all my life. And the specialist was a psychiatrist. And he asked me lots of questions about my family. You know, my mum, my dad, all these people. and. Um, you know, we may be Scottish and we may be, but madness didn't seem to run in my family. You know, you couldn't see any trace of madness in my family, which is probably another way of saying and all Scots are mad, so to me it was normal, you know, from a very early age. Um, I, I guess the, the biggest mistake the doctor made was he then asked me what my childhood was like as he saw uh, five minutes after he met me. And so I told them it was fine. Now, I'm not going to tell someone five minutes after I meet them what my childhood was like. Why would I? Why, can't I, why do people expect us to disclose that kind of really deep personal stuff five minutes into a relationship? You just don't. Um, 